Well, good morning to you. Good morning. It's a good winter morning, isn't it? Call your attention to our announcements. Please uh, be in prayer for our mission team. Uh, they have arrived safely and, and have already done mission work yesterday. We'll be doing uh, worship this morning and more mission this afternoon. So let's keep them in our prayers. They're, they're doing a good job for us in Honduras. Uh, Prime Timers is uh, Tuesday. Throwing tissues around here. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, our Operation Christmas Child boxes are here. If uh, you didn't bring yours, uh, it's not too late. You can still get them to the right place. Uh, the fact is, if you can get them into us before 11 o'clock, they'll be with our group, or even after, right after. Uh, <clears throat> Hanging of the Green service is coming up next Sunday at uh, 6. I hope you'll keep that in your prayers and uh, attend. And then uh, ringing the bells for the Salvation Army kettle is uh, getting ready to get underway. Uh, we need people signing up. We've got more opportunities to ring the bell than we've had in the past. Uh, that's some more opportunities to bring uh, more money in to help the Salvation Army in this Christmas time, and it's a very good thing. So I encourage you to participate in that. And uh, remember our uh, basket ministry for November and Emma. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone's had an opportunity to at least glance at the little insert in, in today's bulletin about our upcoming Festival of Nativities. We're thrilled to be able to have a full-fledged Festival of Nativities this year. Uh, after last year, we just did a little abbreviated one. Um, so if you would, please look through your Christmas decorations, ornaments, that sort of thing, and see if you've got any kind of, of nativity that you could loan us for a few days. So um, if you shared in the past, that's, that's not a problem. We have new people coming every year, so be glad, you're certainly welcome to bring one you've loaned us before. In 2017, the first year that we did nativities, um, we had 92 on display. Then in 20, that was 2017. In 2019, the, first, the third year, we had over 200, so we're hoping to exceed that number this year. I mean, we've got well-loved, old, dog-eared, large ones, some that are for children to play with, so it does, ornaments, doesn't matter what type of nativity, but we would love for you to please share that with us. You can bring these by the Fellowship Hall beginning on Monday, the, 20, the 22nd, I think it is, um, and the Monday before Thanksgiving, so we'll be there from 10 to 3 on Monday and Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we'll be there from 10 to noon. And if you can't get it by, give me a call. I'll be glad to come pick it up or make arrangements to get it from you. So the one-day festival now is going to be on the 28th from 9.30 to 1 and from 4 to 7 in the Fellowship Hall. So it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And invite all your friends Anybody that you may know that would like to come, uh, we would love to have them stop by and participate or enjoy it. And even church non-church members are welcome to donate a nativity. We are not turning them down. So thank you very much and hope to see you then. And it is a, a grand time to have. So now uh, let's uh, move from announcements and prepare our hearts for worship. Is with you. And also with you. 
Oh, Lord, our God, we just thank you for this day. This day that you have made, we will rejoice and we'll be glad in it. May we hear your call with its wonder and follow you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come upon us to settle us and fill us and focus us in thanksgiving for the good that you have done for us and the good we can do. In boldness, may we worship you now, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 126. Sing praises to God who reigns above. Let us stand and sing together. of the glory of God. Now, through the Apostles' Creed, we find the answer to a very important question. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> God, how good and gracious you are. And so, Lord, we gather here to praise you, to give thanks to you. And part of that, Lord, is by giving our tithes and offerings unto you. Lord, receive these gifts and bless them as we give in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I want to invite the children to the altar for children's time at the altar. And before you're seated, please welcome each other to church. Greet one another in Jesus' name.
guys. It's good to see you. Thanks for, uh, for coming down today. I appreciate it. We're going to do something a little different today, okay? We're going to do something special. Uh, today we've gathered what we call Operation Christmas Child Boxes. And maybe, did you all help with some of those? Maybe you did that. This, we do this every year where we take boxes and we fill them with um, little toys and maybe some mittens and gloves and stuff. And these boxes go all over the world to bless children. These are for children who probably wouldn't have anything for Christmas, may not even know what Christmas is. The most important thing about these boxes is that we put in a little note in the language of the, whatever that child speaks in his family that tells them what Christmas is and how Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ and that Jesus came to live and die and rise again that we might have eternal life. And it tells them about, about who, who the Lord is. So what I want you to help me to do today, I want you to help me bless these boxes, okay? Miss Hannah, would you come with me? Let's all of us, all of us, come with me up here. And we'll gather around these boxes. These are just a few of the boxes that we're going to. Would you all just put your hands on? This is kind of an ancient thing that, that we do in the church. And we, we lay hands on things to bless them. So if you'll pray with me, we'll bless these boxes. Lord, we just give you thanks for the blessings you give us. And Lord, we love to celebrate Christmas, your birth in the manger in Bethlehem so long ago. But Lord, we realize that there are a lot of people all over this world who don't know about Christmas, who don't know about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And, and also, Lord, we'll get nothing for Christmas in terms of any gifts. So Lord, we just pray your blessings be upon these boxes as they are shipped all over your world and that the children who receive them might first of all know that they're loved and that somebody somewhere in a little town in Georgia called Cartersville at a little church called Sam Jones was thinking about them and caring about them and gave this gift and they might have the joy of receiving uh, some toys or something that they need but more importantly that they may come to know who you are and may come to know the power and the glory that is Christmas the incarnation the coming of Christ to this world. Lord, bless these boxes and bless every child who receives them and their family. May they come to know of your grace. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, I don't know if y'all want I got some little toys and stuff. If anybody want one, just take whatever you want. Very good. All right. And we'll continue our worship as we sing again. I stand amazed in the presence. Oh, how marvelous. Let's stand again as we sing.
be seated. What a wonderful song. You know, our whole worship service is a prayer with different stations throughout it. So now we turn to the pastoral prayer and we'll begin with a musical interlude to lift your petitions and then I'll lead us forward. May we bow and pray. <coughs> Oh, Lord, our God, your love is always with us, with us even when we ignore it. Lord, we can't escape it. The world may tell us otherwise, yet you call us to higher living, higher living for all of your people. So today, lead us in spirit and in truth in all that we're about. Lord, thank you. For you have forgiven our sins and given us eternal life. We know that you require justice and mercy and humility of us. So today and forever, may we give and do our best to follow you in what you have done, Jesus, and to imitate you in all that we can. We know you know all things. So in humility, may we do good and be faithful. May we love others just as they are without condition for that's how you have loved us. So Lord, in our weakness we cast our anxieties on you knowing you care for us. May each of us learn to be content with whatever we may have and to thank you and glorify you for it. For your love is steadfast. It's better than life itself. And our lips will praise you. We will bless you as long as we live. We'll lift our hands and call on your name. Our mouths will praise you with joyful lips when we think of you in our bed at night and meditate you with to you. For you have been our help our help always. Lord, thank you. Thank you for Cartersville and Bartow County, for Georgia and the United States of America and for your world. Thank you for the opportunities that you lay before us in this world that we can serve you. May we not overlook them, but may we see them. Lord, we pray for our leaders. We pray that they humble themselves and seek your guidance to do what are the right things what are the true things? Lord, we pray for our church, our local parish, and our parish throughout this whole world that will do what you've called us to do, that will be your hands and feet. So Holy Spirit, fill us with love, with joy, with peace, to live strong in our faith. Thank you that we may be your hands and feet, sharing the good news of your kingdom. And may our thanksgiving grow to overflowing for all that you have done for us. For you have loved us so much, we can never count all of the blessings you have given us. So in humility, we turn and we lift the prayer that you gave us, Lord Jesus, as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is the 100th Psalm. So if you'll turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 100, and we'll read it together. It's just five verses, but five very powerful and beautiful and hopefully familiar verses to you. Hear God's word. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our thanks be to God. We are dedicating the, 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 the Sundays uh, in, in November, and, and we start actually in October, with the theme of thanksgiving. And I said as we began this series together that I believe that this is one thing that will absolutely change your life. When we learn to live our life with an attitude of gratitude, when gratitude fills our heart, our lives change. Our perspective on things change. Our perspective on what happens to us changes. I'm inspired by our text this morning. I always have been. It's really been my, my favorite psalm. I love the 23rd Psalm like everybody else. But this, this 100th Psalm speaks to, to who I am as a person. To the grateful heart that I have for God. And inspired by this psalm, I want to lift up four wonderful ways that we can offer our thanks to God. See, sometimes we wonder, well, how can we thank God other than saying, thank you, God? Well, let me suggest there are four ways that we can say thank you to God. There's singing, praying, giving, and testifying. Singing, praying, giving, and and testify. And let me talk about this. A life that expresses those four truths is like incense in the temple of the Almighty. Fragrance that is pleasing to God in the body of Christ. You know, sacrifice in the temple ended shortly after Christ died upon the cross. The temple was destroyed again and, and the sacrificing pretty much stopped. However, gratitude for the Lord's sacrifice, for what happened on, on Calvary's tree that the, the choir was just singing about, should never end. So just how can we live out these truths of biblical expressions of thanksgiving to please the Lord? Let's share, let's talk about it. The first is this. We enjoy thanksgiving and worship by singing. By singing our praise and thanks to God. Have you ever wondered why we sing so much in church? I, 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 mean, I mean, we do. We, we sing songs and, 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 and it doesn't matter what church you go to, you're going to find songs in some way, in, in some form. There may be no instruments. There may be an orchestra. There may be an organ and a piano. There may be some guitars and, and a drum. There may be a huge choir, maybe just a couple of people. But in some way, there's going to be singing in every Christian church. We're a singing people. Why? Well, for one reason, Scripture is full of instruction just to do that. In the Psalms, where we sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, make music to our God. Other Psalms read, I'll be glad and rejoice in you, Lord. I will sing praises to your name forever. Another, I'll give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. We'll sing praise to the name of the Lord. Singing about and to the Lord is, is all over the Old Testament and the New Testament too. And Romans we read, therefore I'll praise you among the Gentiles. I'll sing hymns to your name. Another place, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. Again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. That's you and me, by the way. And sing praises to him, all ye people. In Ephesians, speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of Jesus Christ. We're singing faith. And by the way, it will last forever. 
Because singing is the one thing we know will be in heaven. Back when I was a music director, I used to tell people, one reason I want to be a music director is job security. You know? Because it's the one job I know that's going to be in heaven. You know? Because we're going to sing in heaven. We're going to worship. You don't need a preacher because you're going to know everything. We're going to know perfectly when we get to heaven, but we're still going to sing. And the devil tries all kinds of ways to stop us. I don't think the devil likes us to sing and worship. I really don't. And I can understand why. With all the differences among people today, when we sing, we're saying the same words, probably thinking similar thoughts. We're being harmonious. And the devil doesn't like that. The devil tries to stop it. He puts it in folks' minds to complain. They're complaining about the hymns and the choruses and the style and the instruments. You know, I hear some complaints, you know. Someone said to, someone said to me, from in this church said to me, you know what, she said, you're just so happy and joyful. I said, thank you. They said, I don't like that. I said, I'm sorry, that's who I am. I can be no other. We sing. Worst of all, the devil tries to convince folks that they can't sing. I hate when people say, I just can't sing. Yes, you can. The Methodist tradition is a singing church. Rick Warren wrote, Christianity is a singing faith. You know, there's more songs about Jesus Christ than there is about anything else, even love. The biggest influence on my understanding of, of singing and thanksgiving to praise God comes from a couple of sources. One comes from a place called Rock Eagle. Now, I don't know if Rock Eagle's been a, a, a tradition in, in the Sam Jones Church, but Rock Eagle is a, is a retreat center. And every September, there, there's a, a men's retreat. Rock Eagle's been going on as long as I know about it. I went there as a young person. And, and, and back then, it was a huge thing. There'd be thousands of men who show up at Rock Eagle. And one of the things we'd like to do is sing. And the first time I went there and I heard all those men singing together, I was astounded. I said, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And I said to somebody who was a song leader, I said, why? I've never heard that before. And he said, well, when a thousand men lift their voices in song, it's glorious. I said, I don't, I don't really hear that in my local church. He says, no, you probably won't. Because you know what happens when a man starts to sing? He can hear his own voice in church and he gets self-conscious. And so he either won't sing or he'll sing really soft to himself. But here, with all these guys, some are singing a little bit too high, some are singing a little too low, some are singing a little too fast, some are singing a little too slow. But the Holy Spirit gets involved and puts all that together and makes glorious praise to God. So they had t-shirts that said, real men sing real loud, that they used to wear. I like that. I like that. Another is a man, I'm going to call him Stan. Stan was a fellow in the church I used to go to when I was growing up. He wasn't a musician by any stretch of the imagination or an artist. In fact, he didn't have what most people would call musical talent at all. And I was, I guess, just starting middle school and sitting there and, and, and I remember hearing this, this voice and being at that age, I started giggling, you know, and I want to see who it was. So I did that thing where you pretend like you're putting something in your pew to look behind you to see who it was. And there was, there was Stan, you know, and I go, oh my, you know. So next Sunday I decided I want to sit where I could, could see him and hear him because that was decided so, so funny to me. The way, the way he, 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 he sang, just kind of tickled me, you know. So the next Sunday I did, and I, and I, I was watching him, and, 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 and they started to, to sing. And I noticed something. He kind of did his hands like this. And he closed his eyes. And I saw tears coming down his face. That didn't happen in this place. Then I noticed he was just was radiant. And he was singing and worshiping with an intensity and a, and a depth I'd never seen before. And suddenly my opinion of, of, of Stan and my whole thoughts about singing in church began to change. 
May our spiritual hearts be like that of Charles Spurgeon who wrote, Respond to God and all that he does is gracious. Every movement of his hand is goodness. Therefore, let our hearts reply with gratitude and our lips with songs of thanksgiving and praise. That's what we do when we sing to the Lord on these Sunday mornings. The second way we express our thanksgiving and worship, I think, by, by way of, of praying, just telling God. 1 Thessalonians 2, 8 says, I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger or disputing. The Holy Spirit through David says, my heart says of you, seek his face. The Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayers of the upright pleases God. Prayer is something we can all do. All that's required is a humble heart and a true appreciation of what God has done in your life. You don't need special training. You don't need a special time or a place. You only need to talk to God, to converse with God, to let God know truly that you are grateful for all that God has blessed you with. And then, secondly, just be quiet and listen. See if God has anything to say to you. I read a story years ago in a, 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 some religious magazine. Tell the story of a little girl. She was, she was a poor uh, little girl. She wanted to join the ch church. And again, this was quite a while ago. It was a time and place where you had to show that you were serious about faith in order to officially join a church. And this little girl actually worked as a, as a servant in another country. She was a servant in a large household. She had no education. She had no resources. She had no time. She, she worked there all, all, the, all, the, all the time. But... But, but she wanted to join the, the church. So she went to the preacher and says, can I, can I officially join the church? And the preacher said, well, well, I have to ask you this, young lady. What are you going to do for the Lord? Are you going to be in worship every Sunday morning? And she says, no, I, I have to work on Sunday mornings. I, I have to prepare the meals and, and serve the meals when, 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 when the people I work for come home from church. They expect dinner to be ready. I can't really come r r regularly. and I have, I have nothing to, to, to give. She said, well, what are you going to do for God? She said, well, she said, every night I take the newspaper up to my room. She, the priest said, what in the world is, is that about? Why do you consider that a, a, a Christian act? And the little girl said, well, I always take the newspaper and I turn to the births and the marriages and the deaths. And I read about every birth recorded. And I ask God by name to bring these babies quickly to the Savior so that they may be a blessed by living a life of faith. And as I read about each wedding, I pray that the couple will stray true to each other and that each marriage will be surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And as I read each death, I pray one by one for all the grieving that they may be able to turn their sorrows to the only source of lasting comfort. You see, that's, the, that's a heart that, that's truly expressing thanksgiving to the Lord. The sincere heart that comes to God in thankfulness for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The heart that is in true partnership with God. The third thing, third way I think we can express our, our praise is by giving to God. Yes, it's giving to God. We've been reminding ourselves that, about, about thanksgiving. That thanksgiving is giving thanks and it's also thankful giving. That's what Thanksgiving is all about. In what, 12 days? We'll have a national holiday of Thanksgiving. And I want to say, you know, for us, for Christians, Thanksgiving ought to be kind of natural. Even a national day of Thanksgiving ought to be real familiar to us. It's part of our, 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 our DNA. It's part of our Judeo-Christian heritage. In Deuteronomy, we read three times a year, all the men should appear before the Lord, your God, at the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Tabernacles. No man should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you should bring a gift in proportion to the way that God has blessed you. Those were, were national holidays where, where folks would, would, would gather and, and celebrate and pray and give thanks then also give of themselves of their time and talent and resources. 
don't know if you've ever tried to grow anything in a, in a garden or, or, or a farm, even a, a fruit tree, you understand how everything we have comes to us by the grace of God. Our health. I was walking with a friend the other day, and, and, and he was saying, I said, well, where are you going? He said, I got to go to the doctor. He said, I got to check my iron level. He said, I got too much iron. You got to make sure. And, and, and he says, you know, I said, well, I've heard of people with too little iron. And we talked about that. As we talked, we said, you know, it's amazing that any of us can walk around. When you think about all the things that can go wrong with this human body, all the different enzymes and, and di different minerals and, and the muscles and the nerves and, and the blood and, and everything that can go wrong. With it, and, and yet, but we walk around. It's a miracle. It's a blessing of God. The intellect that we have, the strength in our arms, the very breath we have is by the grace of God. And we ought to respond to that with generosity and express our, our thanks. Giving is an important aspect of giving thanks to God. One preacher talked about overhearing a conversation between two of his parishioners. And one of the parishioners was saying to the other, said, you know, Joe, you got to slow down a little bit. He said, you, you're giving way too much time to the church and, and, and I think way too much, much money. He said, personally, he said, I'm going to make, you know, I'll just wait until, until I get a, a large sum of money. When my ship comes in, then I'm going I'm to bless the church in a, in a mighty, in a, in a big way. The other man said, I, you know, said, I don't know about that. He said, I'll just do what I can. I just do what I can. According to the, the pastor, said the man who waited for that large sum of money, it never came. It never came to him. But the other fellow, he said, seemed to live an abundant life, even though he didn't have a whole lot. He seemed to live an abundant life in every way. We, we, we give out of the gratefulness of our time to, to each other, to our community, to our church, to our Lord. And then finally, the fourth way we express our thanks is by, is by testifying. What do I mean by that? Just talking about the grace of God and, and the faithfulness of God. We need to let others hear about the great love and, and the great work of, of, of God. We need to, to express our, our thanks to, to God in faith by telling other people what God has done in our lives. Years and years ago, one of my mentors said to me, you know, said, son, sometimes you have to open your mouth and let people know why you are the way you are and let people know when you see God at work in your life and the life of others around you. It's a privilege and a responsibility to share with the generation coming behind us about God's faithfulness and how God provides for us and how God protects us and guides us in every situation. And again, this doesn't take any sort of great skill. It doesn't take any sort of great boldness. I'm not calling us to be evangelists or, or, or apologists or apologists or, or those people who defend the, 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 the faith. Sometimes the, the simplest ways are the, the, the best ways. I'm simply saying we need to share with others the, the goodness of God and what God has, has done in our life. It's so powerful when we do that. As a way of saying thank you to God for the way God works in our lives. You know the name Karl Barth? Karl Barth was a theologian. Karl Barth wrote this massive systematic theology. This series of books. Deep theological talks and, 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 and reflection. It's called the dogmatics. If you go to a, a library, it takes a whole shelf of his books. But the most famous saying that he's quoted as is, is somebody came to him and said, well, after all this work, Dr. Barth, what, what, what have you learned? What's the deepest theological reflection that you can share with us today? And allegedly, he said this. Hmm, the greatest thought I ever had. Jesus loves me, this I know, because the Bible tells me so. I'm thankful for the education I received in theology. I'm grateful for the time I have as a pastor to study and read from knowledgeable Bible scholars. But nothing does more to encourage me than listening to the testimony of God's people about God's faithfulness. When people share with me what I call God wink stories where they have had God in their life and they have seen God at work in their lives or in the lives of, of those who who they love and know. I, I read a story this, this week. I, I'll share it with you. 
A story about a, a pastor, he's an associate pastor, what this church is, associate pastor. It's a big church. They already had a senior pastor. They also had another pastor, they call him Pastor Emeritus. I think that means pastor for life. His name was Joe. And Joe had been pastor of that church for years and years and years. And he retired, and then Pastor Joe just, he wouldn't go away, you know. He just didn't go anywhere. He just stayed at the church. And, and he helped the, the other two pastors, the senior pastor, the associate pastor. And, and he would help them in visitation and different things. And one of the things that, that old Pastor Joe loved to do was help with communion. And, and, and during communion, the senior pastor would take one side of the altar, the associate pastor would take the other side of the altar. Old Pastor Joe would stand in the middle, and he would just help them. If they, they used those trays and stuff at this church. He would help them get trays, you know, and exchange empty trays for full ones. Or, or, or if somebody couldn't come to the altar, he'd take communion to them in, in the seat. And anyways, he loved to do that. And something really special too, they said. It was really cool. This very elderly preacher, he stood there in his, his robes and he stood in the center of the chancel. They had beautiful windows like we did. And, and, and oftentimes on Sunday morning, if it was sunny, the sun would shine through the window and just bathe him in light. I said it was really a beautiful sight to see this old man in his robes and just stand there and he's just radiant because he was dealing with what God called him to do, and what he considered to be a great, great blessing. Well, Joe passed away. They had a big service and funeral for him. And, and sure enough, it got to be All Saints Day like we celebrated the other day. And they read his name, and they rang the bell, and they did all the things that you do. And then they had communion like we had last week. And, and, and so they, they had the, the service, and it went, it went, it went well. About a week later, the associate pastor went to the senior pastor and said, look, I've got to tell you something. He said, I've been, I didn't know how to, how to say this. He said, but he said, you know, when we had All Saints Day and, and we were serving communion, and the senior pastor just smiled and said, yeah, you mean when Pastor Joe showed up and stood at his spot at the altar and looked at you and smiled and looked at me and smiled? And look at the congregation, smiled, and then disappeared. And the associate pastor says, uh, yeah, that. <laughs> and they both went to their knees, crying and praising God for who God is and what God has done. Thanksgiving is coming in about a dozen days. And I'll hear folks tell me, <laughs> now don't eat too much. <laughs> Don't overindulge. And friends, nothing's wrong with taking time to feast and watch football and play with the family and the other privileges available to us as Thanksgiving. But let us never overindulge such that we miss the power of this day. The key to beating the depression and unfulfillment that's so common to so many of us is to express our God, express our thanks to God for who God is and what God has done. May we sing and pray and give and share with others the miracles and the blessing that God has done in our lives. And to him be all honor, glory, and praise now and forever. Amen. We'll conclude our time together by appropriately by singing once more. I think you know the tune sent forth by God's blessing. It's hymn number 664. And it's a way of a blessing and a way of ending our service. I invite you to stand as we sing together 664.
Christ, ye who call yourselves Christians, go forth from this place and be grateful and express your thanksgiving by the way you sing and pray, by the way you give and by the words that you say. Go forth and be blessed. Be blessed by God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in his joy. Amen.